When you're younger, it's difficult for older people to listen to you. It's hard to grasp, but it's like, you have to like have crazy content matter past your age. Before Santan, Dave would become a YouTube sensation off the back of his freestyle on the Black Box YouTube channel. Before Santan, Dave would tap into his rough and at times tragic upbringing to help craft his highly praised studio album, Psychodrama. Thank you so much to everyone that supported me throughout my entire career. I wanna thank God. I want to thank my mum, of course, my family has been behind me. Before Santan, Dave would have over 1 million subscribers on YouTube, 693,000 followers on Twitter, and 2 million followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. Santan Dave, who often just goes by Dave, has had a monumental rise to UK superstardom over the past few years, thanks in large part to his critically and commercially successful music that has seen him not only earn the Hyundai Mercury Prize in 2019, but deliver a legendary performance at the Brit Awards in 2020 as well. Today, Dave Dave is only 23 years old and he started this journey back when he was 16 and still reeling from a high profile murder trial that would send his older brother Christopher out of his life into prison to serve a life sentence. This tragic occurrence would be a contributing factor in motivating Dave to accomplish something truly spectacular. So how does Santan Dave not only right his family ship, but turn himself into a poet with a microphone? Stay tuned to our newest episode of Before They're Famous to find out. Hey, what's poppin' guys? It's your boy Marlon Palmer. Recent drops in this series have included looks at Giannis Antetokounmpo and Scarlett Johansson, so please go and check those out. Since the show works off request, don't forget to leave us some ideas with who you want to see next. And I'll see you guys after the intro. Actually, no, I won't see you after the intro. We've got our friend Ride Music who's going to be doing this one for us. Santan Dave was born David Omareggi on June the 5th, 1998, in Streatham, South London. He was the youngest of three sons and raised by his Nigerian mother, Juliet, a local nurse, primarily on her own. That's because Dave's father, a pastor called Frank, was deported back to Nigeria when Dave was only a few months old, after government officials found out that he was travelling on a visitor's visa. As a kid, Dave became something of a musical prodigy from a young age. He was staying inside all the time, practising and refining his skills on a keyboard that his mom bought him at the age of 14. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself why a young, healthy teenager would spend all the time locked away inside, and the reason had a lot to do with what was going on with the people around him. His two older brothers, Ben and Chris, were eight years and five years older than Dave respectively, and their actions would wind up having a direct impact on their younger brother's life. When Dave was only 11 years old, his brother Chris would find himself involved in the murder of Sofiane Bellamuda. It was a high profile case that rocked London back in 2009, and would eventually see Chris sentenced to prison for life. Then, in front of hundreds of commuters, they launched a frenzied attack. In just 12 seconds, he was stabbed 10 times and suffered 20 separate injuries. Only a few years later, Dave's other brother, Ben, also ended up incarcerated after a bungled robbery attempt. From then on, Dave's mum kept him under lock and key, tucked away at home, as safe as possible, as much as possible. As you can no doubt imagine, this period in Dave's life was extremely difficult for him. He had no real social life to speak of, and he also had to stay at home and witness the pain his mother was going through, knowing that two of her sons were locked up far away from her. The single most positive thing to come out of this whole experience was Dave's musical growth. At first, he tried his hand at rapping, dropping his first track at only 13 years old. But he told The Guardian, everyone hated it, so I retired from 13 to 15, that was my retirement. After moving on from his early rap career, that's when Dave found his passion for piano, thanks to his love of film soundtracks, especially the works of Hans Zimmer. A few months later, Dave's mom would buy him that keyboard, and Dave would go on to achieve grade seven as a pianist in almost record time, thanks to the help of a very committed music teacher he found at school. By the time he was 16, he dropped his very first online freestyle on the Black Box channel, one of the UK's most popular freestyle YouTube channels. And it was the same day that he went to college for the first time, attended Richmond upon Thames College to study ethics, law, philosophy, and sound design. A smorgasbord of education, if you ask me, but it makes sense when you see the amount of different interests that Dave has. And I think like the freestyles helped me build the emotion and it helped me build like a genuine connection with the people that were listening to the music. This track gained a lot of notice online for Dave's incredible and passionate description of the moral compromises he's had to make already still at such a young age. He would then follow it up with a couple of other freestyles of a similar nature like an SBTV warm-up session and a fire in the booth session with Charlie Sloth. His next track, 
Thiago Silva with AJ Tracy would elevate Dave's name higher than it ever had been before and take him into the grime scene, one of the most popular forms of UK rap at that time. Eventually, by the autumn of 2016, Dave was ready to release his debut EP, Six Paths, and it reveled in a kind of new, poppy and melodic sound for Dave. And within weeks of its release, it caught the attention of Drake, who laid down a verse for the remix of Dave's song, Wanna Know. Yeah, it just came out and it just exists, and it's just a beautiful thing, really. Just gotta give thanks, because that definitely like was life-changing, and you can imagine what that does for someone yeah, in London. Man. This event catapulted Dave into even further stardom, and when he finished college education in 2016, he had plans to further study at De Montfort University, but he quickly dropped those plans in order to pursue his thriving career in music and as you can imagine his mum was far from thrilled he told the fader when it gets to that time to tell your mum that you're not going to university which has been a grand plan for you for the last 18 years all of a sudden 700,000 youtube views means absolutely nothing that's not a currency she recognizes but dave stuck to his guns and followed his heart and by the time his older brother Ben was released from prison in 2018, David made enough money for himself to help his big brother get back on his feet, financially speaking at least. By March of 2019, Dave was finally ready to unleash his debut studio album on the world, Psychodrama, which would go on to debut at number one in the UK, selling over 26,000 copies in its first week. And it would also go on to be the biggest first week streams for any UK rap album ever. I guess making that album meant to me it was about creating the time capsule speaking about the times that we're in now, the times that I was in when I was making an album. As something of a concept album, Dave's psychodrama gave him the opportunity to kind of therapeutically exercise some demons that he had and tackle his brother Chris's trial and prison sentence as a way to move forward. Not by forgetting what happened, but by forgiving a person for their mistakes. With an ascension to fame as rapid as Dave's, the pressure to continue to produce comes with that. He told GQ, I wake up and I write a lyric on the way to the shower and I stay in the shower until I turn into a prune. I try to write and I think like, I can't afford to fail in anything. That pressure is exhausting. It wasn't initially exhausting, but I can definitely say that now it's exhausting. But Dave wouldn't be where he is today if he didn't know how to overcome these seemingly unscalable barriers. And I have no doubt that he's gonna to continue to produce bangers on his sophomore album, We're All Alone In This Together, drops later this month. It's quite a good album title, and there's actually a really interesting story about where that album title came from if you wanna hear it. Remember how I said earlier that Dave's a huge Hans Zimmer fan? Well, due to Dave's own hard work and success, he actually got paired up with Hans to create a special celebratory piece of music for an episode of Planet Earth. During a FaceTime they were sharing with one another, Hans told Dave, we're all alone in this together. So when Hans finds the album and his playlist sometime soon, he might get a bit of a shock to realise just how much he's influenced and rubbed off on one of the UK's biggest rap stars. And for the rest of Santan Dave's story, like whether we're all alone in this together will earn him even more record breaking sales, that's a story for another time. After all, this is Before They Were Famous. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Before They Were Famous, co-hosted by me, John Ramsey of Ride Music. If you want to see my YouTube channel, I do UK rap content every week. It is Ride Music, R-I-D-E-M-U-S-I-C on YouTube. So type that in and at underscore Ride Music on Instagram. So if you want to jump in my DM, say hello, you're more than welcome. Leave a comment on this video as well and tell me what you think of Dave and what you thought of my hosting, I'd love to know. Um, I really enjoyed this, so hopefully I'll see you next time. And until then, goodbye. Thank you so much, Ride Music, for helping us out on this video. Shout out to the whole UK crowd and audience. We really love you. We're gonna be highlighting a lot more UK people on this channel, so make sure you guys subscribe, stay tuned to Before They're Famous. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll check you guys next time. Bye.